Gormaga, this Marie Galeer card and a Bualam Sakeda out of Rika Sagwali for Sakhtan Kura Vehensa and Law Talk to Hakas and Law Special to Shada Gakil Gwine. My dear friends, I'm delighted to be with you all here on World Mental Health Day. It's a particular honour for me to be here. There's been a very strong Cork bias in, in, in a lot of the speakers here so far. I was delighted to see. So I'm delighted to continue that proud tradition of, uh, of Corkness and, uh, and, and make our impact in Dublin. We didn't have a great year on the, on the football pitch, but I think we, judging by today, we're punching well above our weight by the many speakers with, with a Cork connection. But I am genuinely delighted to be here. It is one of those days World Mental Health Day is a very, for someone like me, a very important day, very special day, but it's also a very busy day with a lot of demands on your time. And then to throw into the mix, it's also the budget day back at the, the big house where myself and Pat Buckley work back in the doll. So it's a particularly crazy day. But when TJ Horahan picked up the phone and rang me and asked me, you know, could I please come out here today in World Mental Health Day and launch this? It's very hard to say no to TJ. So I, I, I was uh, press ganged into it or whatever you want to say, but I, I was browbeaten into doing it. But I'm delighted that I did. I really am, despite having to, to juggle a lot of. Um, uh, minor or more uh, less important less important issues. Can I welcome my colleague uh, Deputy Pat Buckley here uh, who's a TD for Sinn Féin, another Cork man as well, so delighted to see that Cork trend continuing and uh, Deputy Buckley is a, one of the most passionate advocates for mental health and signed the doll, somebody who comes with an enormous personal experience, somebody who has the courage to speak about his own personal experiences and to learn from them and to give of that wisdom and share with it in the most helpful and constructive of ways on so many different occasions. So so delighted to see you here uh, from the Sinn Féin party, Deputy Pat Buckley. Thank you uh, for your presence here. For your presence here. Sorry, that's. Uh I don't know what that was about. Anyway, it, just a few brief messages. It's very difficult for me to do justice to an occasion like this. When I come out here, I just love what I learn. I love what I hear, love what I see, and love the insights that I gain about the wonderful work that's been done on so many levels. When we can get clouded over negativity and we can beat ourselves up about monies and millions and waiting lists and high end stuff, and then you can forget all the really powerful, magnificent stuff that's going on here. And the YMC is an organization that doesn't need my words to, to, to I suppose, give it justification and give it merit. It's there with 170 plus years. Any organization that has stood that test of time, I think tells its own message. It, it's not necessary for me to give it a, to validate it because that's an incredible achievement by itself. And then the wonderful work you do with young people on so many levels. And you were championing issues of mental health long before it was either profitable or popular to be doing so. YMC had recognised the need for young people to have their own space. And I suppose it's a, an irony of sorts, but the YMC provides a safe haven, provides a space with borders and with walls to keep us all safe in, and yet the very organisation itself has no borders. It is all island in Ireland, north and south, and in the world, 130 plus countries, it's, it's uh, represented there. So it's an organisation that provides borders without any borders um, worldwide, and has that global perspective, and has that shared wisdom that it collects from so many of its members worldwide. And we have the enormous um, benefit of that wisdom, and I suppose availing of that wisdom, and it being passed on to our young people. So I do want this very important World Mental Health Day, want to pay tribute and acknowledge and thank the work of YMCA for not only decades, but for centuries at this stage for young people on behalf of the state. Thank you very much for your work and your, your perseverance to YMCA. It's much appreciated. Uh, and I, just another, I suppose, a couple of other notes. We, we talked there about stigma, and I was out this morning on TV3. That's why I'm wearing makeup, if any of you are wondering. I think it's probably still on my face. <laughs> I heard the whispers. But anyway, there was a, I was out on TV3 this morning talking about stigma, and it's great on World Mental Health Day. It gives you a chance to get out and chat, and so many people there are talking about what we need to talk about. And when you reflect on the, the power of words, you know, they are so, so powerful and they can be so damaging and harmful. And I was referred to here in some of the presentations earlier, how words, simple, small words, but are so sharp and so hurtful and can do so much damage. And you're absolutely right. It is about, as David said, it is about creating an education around the power of words. We need to use words more wisely, but also words, the power works both ways. They also can be incredibly powerful tools for us to champion 
the needs of people with mental health issues and to create awareness and to, pro to project a positivity about mental health and about I am whole campaign and about I am a full person, mental and physical, I am who I am, it's okay not to be okay and all of these different messages, those words are incredibly powerful too and they are having great effect and they are, we are achieving an awful lot as a nation. When you look back from a very short while ago and I don't consider myself that ancient but when in our younger years when mental health was never spoken about, anybody who presented with any mental health issue was mad, crazy and not fit for purpose and all we associated was the big red building up high in Cork City that all those people were locked in there. That was mental health, physical health, you went down to the CUH and so on. So thankfully society we have a lot to celebrate about how far we have come and how far we have travelled but that's not for us to be complacent. We need to continue on that journey and we need to continue to champion and to I suppose constructively challenge that stigma and ensure that we use words to very positively proactively create that, that powerful uh, safe space for people and challenge those who, uh, who ignorantly and I suppose inadvertently a lot of the time use words that are very foolhardy but do a pile of damage. But we're making good progress and I want to commend you on this initiative to do that. It's a very, very welcome initiative and one that I personally and politically and on behalf of the government are genuinely very, very grateful to you for, for taking on that nettle and doing the work you're doing towards that. It's, it's much appreciated on, on all of our behalf. And somebody that, as I say, it's a work in progress. It's a work that we will continue with and the work that we will uh, grow. Uh, YMCA are doing that wonderful work and I do appreciate it on behalf of everybody here and wish you well in your future endeavours and hope you continue to challenge it. One of the initiatives that I um, spoke about as well earlier this morning that I would like to do and I think will benefit YMCA very much is uh, is a signposting, and I refer to it as a front door that I would like to see established on an all island base, or well, in, in Ireland, in, in, the, in the jurisdiction that I have domain over at this point in time, but hopefully it will, be, it will spread, where we have a one single phone number contact, a front door for accessing services. Because one of the challenges are is the average person out there will have no idea what YMCA does or what it is providing, what kind of services are available there. And if you, I'm a young person with a mental health issue today or tomorrow, and I'm wondering what, what should I do, where should I go, who should I speak to? Do I think of YMCA as somebody that I should go to? Am I aware of the wonderful services that they are provided there? I might think of a loan, I might think of a wear, I might think of pay at a house, I might think of jigsaw, I might think of the, the myriad and you refer to in your list there, do, there's a fantastic range of services there, but it's about accessing the most appropriate um, resources. And a lot of the time people who are in power of referring aren't doing that very wisely and they're referring you straight to CAMS. And not everybody needs to see a consultant psychiatrist, not everybody needs to be put on that waiting list to see a consultant psychiatrist. As Callum so expertly and powerfully put across there, the amount that can be done at such a lower level, I mean your words, and I spoke about the power of words earlier Callum, they spoke just so many volumes, you yourself, your existence, your presentation, your confidence and your ability to express how you did feel and the challenges you had and how you overcame them and then your solution-led approach by having a safe space that allows so many other ways to express yourself than just words and than just therapies, than just, well, uh, speaking therapies and, and counselling and so on. You spoke about art and music and creativity and allow people to express in safe places and how that helps you. And I mean, my God of Almighty, you are some incredible shining example of what that space has allowed you to become. So there is so much more we can do with so much of what we have. We can recognise it. And if we can more appropriately refer people to it. So what I would hope to see established within 12 months, which will give YMCA, YMCA I believe, the standing and the due recognition, recognition it deserves, is to have a front door, a single number that everybody can dial, a bit like the 999 number that's you know, immediately recognised by everybody, anything to do with mental health, just dial, it's like TALK, T-A-L-K, which I think is 8755, some number like that, and you would be appropriately referred. So you say, my name is Jim Daly, I'm in Clonakilty, and I'm feeling very down, and it's going on with a while, and I'm concerned about it. It's not just a typical odd day off here and there. And they'd say, well, you know what you should do? There's a local YMCA club or there's a local youth club or a jigsaw or whatever. All the services that are there can come in and be recognised and be, I suppose, identified and listed. And you can be appropriately referred to the proper one rather than presenting to your GP and being sent to one of two either CAMS or the emergency department, which isn't appropriate. Not everybody needs to be medicated. Not everybody needs to be hospitalised. There is so much power within all of our communities and resilience that we can tap into. And I'm very confident if we better streamline and manage the range of services that are there, we can make so much more use of what 
what we have and recognise it and bring it in from, from the cold. So with those few words on, Mort on World Mental Health Day, I want to again thank you very sincerely for the invitation to, to share on this occasion with you, to commend you on what you have done and wish you every good luck going forward. Gurmila Mahakwev Galer. Thank you.